Hey guys, this is Bobby with No Fish Charlotte, and I'm sitting here with Dr. John Hochter of Hochter Chiropractic and Family Wellness. It's a chiropractic practice, I guess would be the words, kind of jumble my speech, but it's a chiropractic practice in Cornelius, North Carolina, up on Lake Norman, up my way. Um, you've probably seen them on Twitter or on Facebook or whatever. We do a lot of work with them. And Dr. John is on our medical board, and that basically means that everything that we put out, whether it's to challenge participants or to schools or whatever, he checks it for factual accuracy to make sure, you know, we're not lying, mm -hmm. um, which we don't, but, you know, we need doctors and chiropractors and things like that to, to ensure that we don't lie. He had a talk tonight. We were taping this on Wednesday, November the 3rd. He had a talk tonight about rethinking cancer. And before I kind of you know, mess up what the talk was about. I'm going to let you do it. So what did you talk about? Kind of tell us a little bit about how the talk went. Well, thanks so much for coming and stopping by. Um, the talk was basically, uh, we had about 25 people here, and it was just, uh, you know, kind of rethinking our approach to cancer. You know, currently we kind of have this uh, reactive model where, you know, we sort of live in fear that we're going to get cancer. And unfortunately, you know, one in two men will develop cancer in their lifetime, and one in four will die of it. For women, it's it's one in uh, six. Excuse me, one in three will develop it, and one in, one in five will die of it. So you know, <clears throat> it's a really really big deal. And our our thought process typically is, well, you you live in fear, and then um, if un unfortunately you, you get cancer, we sort of have this crazy let's cut it out, burn it out, or poison it out approach with you know radiation, chemotherapy, or surgery. And and unfortunately. You know, both radiation and chemotherapy actually causes more cancer, and and the reality of it is, is that we could, you know, most experts agree we could cut uh, cancer rates by eighty to ninety percent with just simple lifestyle changes. So that was really the core, uh, the meat of the talk, um, and then we sort of went on from there. Now we have to bring everything back to water consumption right. and talk about so, right. uh, so let's talk about that a little bit. Yes. You mentioned simple lifestyle changes, and the simplest right. one is the challenges we give out, which is yes. drink water. Right. Talk a little bit about how soda, diet soda, how those things play a role in cancer and how simple lifestyle changes can kind of prevent that. Well, I mean, I think the, the biggest thing with soda is the sugar content. Uh, sugar is literally like rocket fuel for, um, for cancer cells. You know, when we, when we drink soda, like, you know, uh, and we have this huge influx of, of, of sugar into our, our blood system, we're forced, our body's forced to release insulin. And insulin is basically the most anabolic hormone that we have in our body. And that's okay for normal cells, but when it comes to cancerous cells that are already, you know, multiplying and proliferating at an unchecked, uncontrolled rate, we don't want to give them this sort of super rocket fuel and encourage that growth. I mean, people say all the time, sugar is cancer fuel. So we want to make sure that we're not taking a lot of refined sugars in, and the high fructose corn syrup in Coke is about the worst thing. So, and, and here's the other thing too, is our immune system is going to control our body's response to cancer. And when you drink soda, you're decreasing your body's white blood cells' ability to, to act. Um, you're, you're doing all of this stuff to the immune system, and, and that lasts for about four to five hours. So if someone's drinking three Cokes a day, which is certainly not unheard of, you're literally systematically wiping out your immune system while at the same time you're feeding any precancerous cancerous cells maybe in your body. So it's really this deadly one-two punch. So if you can if you can switch to water, Bobby, I mean, I'm preaching the choir, but you know how it is. And, and talk a little bit about the biggest question we get now when we mention this is diet soda. Um, talk right. a little bit about the problems with diet soda because it's right. necessarily it maybe a little bit worse. Right, and that's the thing too. And a lot of times when people will say, "Well, gosh, there's no there's no sugar content, and maybe it's good for diabetics or something, or it's good for people." No, it's not. The actually a lot of the artificial sweeteners, um, I'm thinking aspartame, they're actually neurotoxins, and a lot of them are linked to cancers of the central nervous system and migraine headaches and and all these other things. So yeah, diet soda is going to go in there just just as well. And I mean, it's a race to see who's worse for you, but just. <laughs> Soda, you know, whether it's diet, whether it's, you know, whatever it is, whether it's one of those new, I guess they got these new combination sodas, Max, yeah. where it tastes like it's more sugary, but it's not, anything, <laughs> anything that says soda on it, you just run away. And, and you obviously are not a soda drinker, pretty no. much at all. No, ever, um, ever, no, no. So, talk to, and we, we ask every participant who's taken the challenge, who we get on video, they are obviously not professionals, but we still ask their advice for new people who are taking the challenge. If you're watching this at home, you're about right. to take one of our challenges. As a professional, as a medical professional, what is some advice you have for people who are trying to get off coke, or you know, soda or diet soda or whatever? Love yourself enough to not drink soda. <laughs> you're worth more than that. I tell you what, if there is if there's one thing that we could do in this country that would 
would just have unbelievably positive rippling effect for vitality, health, and wellness, it would be stopping soda. And you're worth more than that. You're worth more than a dollar of, of uh, you know, of cancer fuel. You're worth more than a dollar of, you know, immune suppression. You're more worth more than this dollar of obesity. I mean, I, you know, I know we're steering off topic, but again, it makes you obese. It's the number one source of calories in this country, and obese people are one to two times more likely to develop things like pancreatic cancer, esophageal cancer, colon cancer. So again, it's this vicious cycle. So just, you know, find someone that's going to support you, get with the, the No Fizzle crew, get with these people and um, that you're going to be able to communicate with and have some friendships with and just stay soda free. You're, 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 you're worth more, and, and I'll tell you, you're going to feel better and better every day you can accomplish it. And, and I guess my last question for you regarding soda. Now, this has been talked about, the New York Times did an article about this, and it's proposed in some places. What do you think about putting some sort of warning label on soda like they have on cigarettes? I love it. You know, this is something that has come up. To me, really, I think soda, and, and I'll, I'll throw this out there, fast food, McDonald's. I, you know, I think these people, just the way that we vilify Joe Camel, we're going to vilify, you know, the big C and the big Pepsi, you know, those logos. We're, we're going to, you know, when, when people really, when they look at the shape that we're in, health and wellness wise and they're gonna look at well, what's the number one thing they're consuming what's the problem here I think that they're really gonna have like, some huge backlash and just like we say well, gosh it's so immoral to to have Joe Camel marketing to kids it's so immoral you know we're gonna look at the same way at Ronald McDonald's we're gonna look at the same way at these soda manufacturers because it is it's they're really contributing to um, you know, the sad shape of health in this country. So no Coca-Cola polar bear for you? No. No, I'll tell you what, yeah, that, that Santa, it's, we're coming up to the holiday season, that Santa and that, all that feel-good Coke and Christmas, man, don't, don't believe it. Don't buy into the hype. Coke is bad. Bad. So you heard it here first. No more polar bear, no more Pepsi, whatever yeah, they've got. Yeah, whatever, yeah, whatever <laughs> Pepsi. Yeah. Whatever they've got. Right, there's no good. Not into it. That's it. We're sitting here again at Hoctor Chiropractic and Family Wellness. We'll put some links on the blog where you can find him. He's up in the Lake Norman area. John, thanks for doing the video. Thanks so much, Bobby. Congratulations on a good talk. Thanks, and man. hopefully we'll do some videos pretty soon here. Yeah, definitely. I just remember, too, if you guys listen to our radio shows, you're on, I believe, next week. Is your is your big radio show? Yeah, and it's I don't know. 11th. I don't know when this will air, but guys, we're having a food drive. Is that okay to plug that? Oh, we're, we'll uh, put it up on. Tomorrow, I guess Thursday. So yes. Okay, awesome. Angels and sparrows, guys. All this month, if anybody wants to get their spine checked, if you have any nutrition questions, um, any sports injuries that need to be addressed, for twenty five dollars, we'll take a look at you, and we're going to donate a hundred percent of that to the Angels and Sparrows uh, food kitchen. You know, everyone thinks you know it's the holidays. Everyone thinks that you know being hungry is something that happens away in other countries, but there's plenty of people here. You know that they need nutritious food too. So please, if you can, if you can support us on that, we'd love it and we'd appreciate it. Cool, sounds good. We'll put a link up to that too, guys. Make sure you check out our blog, our videos. We're doing stuff obviously all week and all, all month. Week, all but month. this will go up, and then you can hear John on November 11th. I believe that's next Thursday awesome. on the radio show. And we're talking about fast food. It's a good one. You brought you brought the facts on that. One. Yeah, I tried to I tried to melt some faces <laughs> on that one. So that that one's a little scary, but very informative. Right. Thanks a lot, guys, for right. watching. We'll catch you guys next week.